Hello YouTube, so I'll be making a tutorial on arrays, two-dimensional arrays, and three-dimensional arrays within Java. So essentially when you think of an array, you have to think of sort of like a list for a single dimensional array. So say I have a bunch of marks that I want to display, and I would I would have to store an integer array of a single respective mark. Now of course you could have an, uh, an integer called mark1, you have an integer called mark2, an integer called mark3, and so on and so forth. However, there's an easier way to do this and to store it, and that's called an array. So now to declare an array, we just do int marks, equals new int, and then we specify how many marks. So let's say I have four marks. Now, this is how it works. You declare the type here, the dimension here. So if it's one dimension, you put only one pair of square brackets. So in this case, we're only using one dimension. I'll be going over the others later. And here you indicate the size of the array. So inside here, let's say my first mark, which would be indicated by 0, because in Java it goes by 0, equals, and let's say about 98%. Let's say my second mark, which would be 1, is 74%. Let's say my second mark, my third mark, that is, was in 83%. And let's say my last mark was a 52%. Now let's just try to output just marks and see what happens within the array. Now it says there's no applicable overload. Now if we do plus that, let's see what happens. And it outputs the literal address. Of it. So now what we need to do is we need to specify the actual index of it. So we'd have to do marks 0. See the output line mark 0. And then it outputs 98%. So that's for my first mark. But what if we want to output all of the marks? We'd have to use a for loop as said before. So we declare a variable, it goes up to 4, i++, plus plus, and we do c.println marks, and we do i. This way it shifts to every single dimension of i, it goes 4 times, which is the same as this, and normally we use a constant for the size of the array, but I'm going to keep it this way, and then it's going to output every single time throughout the array. So if we click run, it'll output through all of my marks. Similarly, we can output it marks plus mark that plus that percent sign. So now when we output this, it's going to appear marks 98, 74, blank, blank. Now if you want to include a name, you can simply include a uh, subject equals new string 4 and then here we can do subject 0 equals to say I got any in programming. Now let's say my second subject I got 74 in mathematics. I had a bad semester. Uh, I got an 83 in science. Also bad. And I just could not understand French. Now Mar now marks in plus subject i plus that and I'll click run and now it says marks mark in programming and then it states the respective mark. Now you could do formatting also but for the purpose of this I'll keep it this way. So this works just fine. Now another way and another type of array would be a two dimensional array. Now a two dimensional array is pretty much similar to this except we have another dimension. So we could have another dimension like this, let's say marks equals new, int, and let's say a dimension here and a dimension here. Now in order to use this, let's give an example and I'm going to say there's a class. Usually classes you'd use an inheritance and encapsulating the data through a class. For, for the purpose of this I'll keep it simple. So this may declare a constant integer which is defined by a final int. And now I do this in all caps lock, let's say students, and let's say there's two students. Now let's say marks, and let's say there's three marks. So in here we're going to input students. So in the size of this one, I'll input marks. Now that since there's two dimensions, we need to go to the first student. So let's say marks, and then the first student, first mark we got was 32. Marks, and then inside here, we have to do a zero as well. So zero. Now the first student also got a mark on the second assignment of 75. And last but not least, 
on this very last mark, he got a mark of 54. Meanwhile, the other student, he got a mark on his first assignment of 64, but then he improved, and he got a 97. And he's so smart, on the second assignment, he got a mark of 99. Now if you click around, there's no syntax errors, and again, we have to cycle through each array. Now the problem is that we have two dimensions, so we need to make a nested for loop. So we're going to make it until it's less than students, and then inside here we're going to make it axis less than marks. I'll see that print line, and I'm going to say marks and i, and inside here x. So this way it'll go through every single possible scenario. So we're going to use a ternary operator as before and save students if if if, if i equals equals zero then we're going to output mark else the student name is ratio plus plus mark is plus and here we're going to include a uh, percentage sign. So this is just a ternary operator. I have a tutorial on that as well. And now we're going to output it and it says mark 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 ratio mark is 64 blank 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 blank. So yeah there's a small issue now that is not outputting something. So let's find out what the issue is. And mark mark <laughs> mark marks and ratios I could do this in a single line, so marks mark is 32%, marks mark is 75%, marks mark is 54%. Now, you can change the type to string or regardless of whichever one you want, but for the first tutorial, this is how it works. Now, you can add an additional dimension, a three dimensional array, but that's complex, so it generally works upon the same purpose. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and like this for more content, and please comment below if you want more videos. Thanks for watching.